We started with centroids by balancing a pencil on your finger and sort of showing how finding where the equivalent point force from the weight of your pencil acted was the same as balancing the moments on either side. And we compared that to the integral formulas for the centroid to show you how those two things were the same. Now we're going to use direct integration, that is, use the formulas from that summing the moments to find out where the centroid is of the load intensity diagram here on the left, where y equals x squared. Because I'm going to integrate dA here, and I'm going to integrate x dA, I want to use, for the beginning, a vertical rectangle. So dA ends up being the height, base times height, is y dx, or in this case, x squared dx. Now I have dA in terms of x, I can plug it in to my integral formula and solve. When I find y bar, I'd like to use a horizontal element because I'm integrating y dA. And I can say dA is still base times height, now it's the base is bigger, the base is going to be x, 6 minus x, or I can solve that and now I have that in terms of y. If I take those, dA is x squared dx and dA is 6 minus root y dy, and plug them in, I can find what x bar and y bar are, where the centroid is for the load intensity diagram on the left. Notice that your limits of integration here match what you're integrating with respect to. So if you're integrating dx, you're going to go from 0 to 6. If you're integrating dy, you're going to go from 0 to 36 up here. That gives me 9 halves m and 15.6 newton meters. So to find x bar, we often use a vertical rectangle. To find y bar, we often use a horizontal rectangle. But you know that you can color a shape in any direction you'd like to color. You don't have to go in only one direction. So can I use, in fact, d the same dA for both of my integrals? That's going to be really nice if I have something that looks like y equals x cubed plus x, because trying to figure that out for a horizontal integral and solve x equals some function of y is not going to be easy. I can do the x part. If I look at a vertical rectangle here, then dA is base times height, x cubed plus x, this is my height here, times dx, and I can sub that in, my limits of integration are 0 to 6, and I can get a number here that's 4.78 meters. Now, I don't want to do this solving, so what can I do instead? Consider a basic coordinate plane with some sort of function on it, w of x. Any function will do. Maybe this is a distributed load that I want to find the equivalent point load for and where that would act, or maybe it's just an area that I want to find the centroid of, center of gravity. You can add up little strips to find that centroid so that x bar is the integral of x dA over the integral dA, just like we just did. x is going to vary from 0 to b. dA is my base times height, which ends up in this case being dx times w of x. I can plug that in. I get a formula for the centroid. The y bar coordinate of the centroid is still y bar is the integral of y dA over the integral dA. And for some shapes, like a triangle, I can use a horizontal differential element. But that is not going to work here at least not in any sort of easy way. Now the vertical strips worked. We could find x bar. So can we use the same dA before as we used before to find y bar? Yes. The trick is knowing what you're adding up. We're summing the moments, remember. When you go back to your pencil, you're balancing your pencil on your finger. What does it mean to do that? Now think about the center of gravity if the gravity actually went to the right. So if I turn this this way, so that you're talking about balancing the blue pencil on your finger, where does the equivalent point load act? Well, it's going to act in the middle, at the centroid of the, load and of the differential area. So if I flip that back around again, what I'm looking at now is pretending that the entire blue area acts at the red dot. I can use the same dA to calculate y bar. The same dA is base times height, and now I'm using a vertical element, so it's just dx times w of x, as long as I'm using that value for this integrand. As long as I use yAL. Now it's like putting all of your pencil weight at the middle and adding that up with this integral. In this particular example, yL, this term here, has to be the middle of my rectangle.
In this example, that is half of w of x. Please don't try to memorize these formulas. What you need to do is actually draw the box and say my, end, my middle is right there and figure out what the coordinate is for that point. Now notice when we found x bar we were also using xl. It's just that here xl is equal to x. If you use a vertical stripe to find x, that's true because the width is vanishingly thin. So x bar for the entire for this piece right here is the same as x. So this term and x equals xl. When I find y bar using a vertical element, y bar y l is not the same as y. So my function of this would be y. But my y a l is only half of that. So the critical point here is that these integrands, x and y, have to be the coordinates of the centroid of the differential area. And what I mean is you have a coordinate system. Find me where this point is. So that that point is the centroid of your differential element. If let's go back and look at our problem here. x is the integral of y is x cubed plus x. I want to now find y bar but using a vertical differential element. I can say dA is the same vertical strip as it was before. I just need to make sure that my yEL is the coordinate for the centroid of my differential element. In this case, halfway up. So I have a divided by 2 that goes into this. And if you plug that in, you will see that your integral ends up being 63.1 newtons per meter.